in politics. Something for everyone. Yesterday we had the Liberal Democrats winning in Somerton and Froome. We had Labour winning, uh, overturning a 20,000 majority in Selby and Anstey up there in North Yorkshire and in Uxbridge and South Ryslip. The Conservatives clinging on by their fingernails, but nonetheless, a win's a win. 495 majority. Uh, John Woodcock is Lord Walney. He is a former Labour MP and knows the party inside out. I'm delighted he's with me now, John. Uh, great to talk to you. Hi, Peter. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. Very well, thanks. Um, listen, in terms of Labour, Selby and ANC, absolutely no doubt about it. You know, famous victory for them. 21 points ahead if you put all of this together uh, in terms of yesterday's results. Obviously, by-elections are a bit weird and they're all sorts of different issues and so on. Is Keir Starmer unstoppable, do you think, John? I think it is very hard to see uh, the Conservatives being able to pull out of the uh, of the huge hole that that they're in now, and and I think that the the Selby result, which is is remarkable even by the, the scope of of by elections, which do tend to go against the the governing party. I mean, the the Selby the Selby seat was so safe, um, and it and it's such a significant shift that it, I think it does it is a marker of the fact of how little faith. Uh, the way that faith has run out in in the Conservatives, and I thought for a while that if they really banded together, that they listened to their core election strategists and and ran a sort of, you know, not very not very pretty campaign, um, but they all knuckled down and pulled in the same direction, then they might actually be able to just scrape over the line. But I, you see that. So many, actually, of the people in the in the House of Commons now, those those MPs, have, have effectively given up, mm, mm. Um, and they're looking towards at the next stage of life, or they're looking to opposition, and they're building these new strange sort of talking groups within the Conservative Party. And they don't look like a party that is really desperate to to, to win and to carry on. And they let you kind of pick that up; it, that seeps out, and I think it sort of becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. Yes, yes. I, I, I agree with you, John. And it's interesting in terms of that, because there are so many Conservatives. Every time you pick up your phone or, or log on to one of the political websites and see someone else is standing down, uh, the SNP mm. actually, um, the, quite a few of them standing down as well. I wonder if they're seeing the writing on the wall in Scotland. I know you know Scotland pretty well as well. Maybe you can give your thoughts on the SNP in terms of where they stand in all of this. Of course, they weren't contesting any of the by-elections in England. But what do you make of the state of, of their party at the moment? Uh, certainly, in terms of the national picture, yeah, um, the SNP are in a are in a desperate state, and you've had that situation in Scotland where, for for a number for many years now, the, the performance of the government and the way that sort of key things that matter to the Scottish people, like the education system, which the the Scottish government, uh, whomever who, whoever is running it, has complete control over has has been really underperforming real problems and yet that support for the scottish national party is held up and you've mm. you've always hoped you well some of us have hoped you've always thought that it would that, that that would be hollowing out over time and if you think back actually to the to the scottish political history in recent decades it does have that history of of, of suddenly flipping so in in 1990 Seven. Look, look the, Scotland was on already on its way to being um, Labour dominated. Was already Labour dominated, obviously. But then you had that sort of total wipeout of the Conservatives in 1997, and then similarly you had Labour having performed um, uh, really well compared to the UK trend in that 2010 by-election that brought. Uh, the Conservatives into government, but then in 2015, that Labour wipeout. So they do have a history, the voters are going, actually, it's time for a change now. And you look at the the, the scale of the of the trouble that Hamza Youssef is in, and you look at, you know, does he have the level of capability that his previous, those previous SNP leaders, whatever you thought of their cause and some of the things around them, were very, very capable people. Mm -hmm. And it looks a very different picture now. And and Labour is genuinely getting its act together north of the uh, north Yeah, of it's, it's interesting you mentioned Hamza Youssef because I think whether you love or loathe uh, Nicola Sturgeon and I might be slightly in the latter camp, uh, she was an incredible communicator and then, of course, rendered almost speechless by the uh, by the controversy over, over the rapist calling himself Isla Bryson. Um, John, I want to talk to you a little bit about Sadiq Khan and Ulez and the fact that cabinet members, according to the Daily Telegraph, are now urging Rishi Sunak to abandon 
eco policy. So let's just take a little look at what Sadiq Khan has been saying because Uxbridge and, Uxbridge and South Ryslip, really it seemed that ULES was the big issue there. Let's see how he mm. has reacted to that and then I'll come back to you John. Let's hear from Sadiq sure. Khan. The decision to expand the Ultra Emission Zone uh, was, was a tough one, but it's the right one. Why? Because every year across South Sea, roughly speaking, 4,000 people die prematurely. There are children with stunted lungs forever. Adults with a whole host of health issues from asthma to cancer, dementia to heart disease. Uh, so we do want to clean up the area in London. I think it's a uh, human right not a privilege. Nobody puts up with dirty water, white, white dirty air. But we're going to carry on listening. We're going to carry on uh, monitoring uh, the policy, monitoring the take up. One of the reasons why I've announced a massive uh, £100 million scrappage scheme is to support those Londoners to make the transition. We widen the eligibility to help even more uh, uh, Londoners. Uh, of course, I'm disappointed uh, that this seat that's never been Labour in my lifetime uh, didn't go uh, Labour uh, last night. Obviously, I welcome the 7% swing to uh, Labour in this outer London uh, seat. We're determined to clean up. So that is the Mayor of London, the City Khan, just talking yesterday. John, he says he's listening in terms of ULES, but actually, is he? Uh, it, it sounded to me like Sadiq is, is is determined to to press on, and I can understand that an administration in in London uh, sees the, the the scale of of damage ac across the Greater London area, which, which is done by uh, by air pollution, and wants to impact on it. But that it is a it is a is a large microcosm, but it is a microcosm of um, the the challenge and the decisions that are facing Labour nationally over how much ahead of an election mm. they lean into their green credentials and um, and try to define the uh, the choice in front of the voters about choosing a, a, a set of, uh, of people to run the country that are going to be um, more passionate about tackling climate change than the current but, but administration. It, but, it's, but it's interesting, I wonder what your assessment of, of, of this is, because I see in the Labour Party, I see Ed Miliband on one side, and, and perhaps Sadiq Khan as well, on one side of this, and it's maybe no. not a row necessarily, but there is definitely the kind of Rachel Reeves, Shadow Chancellor school of thought, thinking we've got to keep costs down, uh, Labour doesn't want to have any unfunded spending commitments, We've got this sort of march toward net, net zero by 2050, which I, I should say all three major parties mm -hmm. are, are signed up to and actually the Conservatives brought in. But for Labour, it is a big point of discussion in terms of the fact that net zero may be something that they find desirable. I'm not sure I do, but they, they, they find it desirable. But at the same time, there is a cost. There's absolutely no doubt that there are major changes in the way the economy works. And Rishi Sunak urging today, being urged today by, by cabinet ministers, we're told, to actually abandon these pledges. Yes, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think we, we, we sh I'm of the view that we step back from the, the progress that we've we've made uh, as, as a country and, um, and as a world at our, at our longer term enormous uh, cost. But if, if you look at the difficulty that there has been and the continued difficulty at forging that sense of a con of a consensus either between parties, within the public, between countries, at the rate you get. It is very difficult because you're absolutely right, Peter. It involves costs and potentially costs on, on a scale that we have not put to the electorate yet. And that is a that is the perhaps the biggest challenge of our time. And I think that that wiser heads are around the the Labour cabinet, shadow cabinet ta table are thinking, do we really want to make this the defi a mm. defining issue? at the general election. If you think about the way in which that difficult process of forming a consensus across politics and across society, it's very easy to go in and sort of look up like you've got a bit of a mess messianic glint in your eye mm, mm. Um, about glowing, going lean and teaching other people lessons. And the public go, oh, oh does, he, do they, does Labour want to teach me lessons uh, about this? I'm not sure about this. Uh, and, and then maybe put off. Um, on um in a way when actually they are crying out for 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 change in um for change in their government overall and so i can understand why people just you know they just don't want to give people an unnecessary reason and actually probably a false reason given the level of consensus there is between the conservatives and labor at the moment um that's a really to, interesting point 
Yeah, that's a really interesting point, John. Listen, thank you for your time this morning. I know sometimes you can be a hard man to get hold of. Uh, John, thank you very much indeed. That's John Woodcock there, Lord Walney, who has joined us today. Thank you to him. I want to talk to Martin in Staffordshire. 